Hello and welcome to Engineering Deathmatch. We are filming here at Cisco Live in Las Vegas. We have a very special episode dedicated to APIC EM and interacting with the APIs for APIC EM. Let's go ahead and meet our contestants. Up first, we have Ame Patil. Come on up. So tell me a little bit about yourself, Ame. So uh, I've, I've actually joined Cisco less than a year back, and uh, this is my first Cisco Live, so I'm pretty excited about it. And uh, this is going to be our first uh, official uh, uh, programming competition as well. So, you know, very excited on all fronts. A lot of firsts there. Do you have any sort of strategy when it comes to approaching this death match? Anything that you're going to try to do or not to do, more importantly? I, I, I guess the main thing I'm going to keep in mind is to stay calm and stay focused and uh, probably not get distracted by the uh, people coming in and, uh, and, you know, take it from there. All right. Up next is Swathi. Ardeshna, did I say that right? I was really worried about saying you guys' name wrong. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Swathi. Uh, I'm a proud Epic EM engineer. Uh, I joined Epic EM like, since its infancy uh, level, and I was in the, like uh, growing Epic EM from a, a very small team to the part of the Cisco DNA. Um, I'm really passionate about the user experience and user interactions. Uh, so that's just who I am. Great. So since the infancy, so you are changing Apex EM diapers, so to speak. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Do you have any sort of strategy that you're looking to use moving forward? Anything that uh, that you're going to try to do during this? Oh, I should not reveal any strategy here. <laughs> <laughs> no strategy. I like it. Flying by the seat of our pants. All right. So let's go ahead and hear what you guys are going to be tackling today. We have our match scenario here. Um, here we go. Find Yourself Adventures has been pro providing life-defining experiences to its customers for the past 35 years. Their most popular adventure package involves them dropping customers in the middle of the woods with nothing but the clothes on their back and forcing them to survive to find themselves. In the 10 years that they have offered the Drop You in the Woods package, they have had approximately 40% of their customers make their way back to civilization. The company claims the other 60% has just decided to live a simpler life in the woods. Unfortunately, Find Yourself Adventures is having a problem finding some of the components of their network. They would like you to use the APIC EM API to help them discover the network topology so that their network doesn't end up like the other 60%. Make sense? Yep. All right. This episode was sponsored by Cisco DevNet. For more information about APIC EM and the RESTful APIs used in this episode, go to developer.cisco.com. All right, contestants, on your mark, get set, go! So I just read through the problem statement. Uh, it's quite challenging, actually. It's, it won't be a straightforward uh, programming exercise that I thought it would be. I would have to use multiple APIs and correlate data. Uh, so I'm expecting to be a tough one, a longer program than something short. <laughs> so what he's already gone into dev mode. It's John and Adam in the booth. Hey Adam, you know, you co-hosts are starting to get a little bit like the drummer for Spinal Tap. You're swapping out all the time. But what I really want to know is, what are you going to do to be better than the last couple of guys? Well John, it comes down to one thing. I'm much better looking than them. You, you, you realize you won't be on camera for this, right? What? Wait, hold on. I need to call some people. While Adam reaches out to his agent, Ame is getting started by installing some Python packages that will help him interact with the APIC EM API. Okay, I'm back. Get everything sorted out all right? No, not really. Well, all right. Well, why don't you give the audience a little overview of what APIC EM really is? Sure thing. APIC EM is a software-defined network controller to automate advanced networking tasks. Basically, it uses northbound REST APIs for, and web-based interfaces to manage the network. It supports PMP, QoS, IWAN, and all kinds of other fun stuff. And you know what? It's free. Free? Free. Free? 
And get this, it runs on any x86 server or VMware. Well, that sounds pretty good. While I may make some progress with his application, let's check in on squatting. So I just read the problem statement. Uh, looks like it involves uh, multiple API calls. Uh, since I work on the UI, I came across like almost uh, all the APIs and all the different applications. But this competition, like it requires some few of the topology APIs, which uh, I never had a chance to play with. So this is a good, good uh, opportunity for me to play with uh, different APIs. Looks like Swati's making some good progress here. Yeah, both our contestants are taking a slightly different approach to the same problem. While Amay is using Python, Swati is using JavaScript. But in the end, they're going to use JSON to interact with the controller. Jason? No, JSON. Who's Jason? Not who, what. JSON is an open standard format that makes it, makes it easy for humans to read and write data to machines. So we've got snakes and guys named Jason helping us code today? Yep, that about sums it up. Hey John, why don't you give us an overview of what the contestants need to do today to be successful? Sure thing. As we said before, the contestants are using the APIC-EM API um, and they're going to interact with the APIC-EM controller to create a network map with a lot of information. So some of the information that they're going to, use, that they're going to provide is uh, text information about the nodes and interfaces on the network with platform IDs, names and IP addresses of each node. Now the thing that might throw them for a loop is we don't want to provide any information on host names that are connected, so if it's a host instead of a, a piece of network uh, equipment, then we want to exclude it from the output. Let's see what's going on with the contestants. So, Ame, how's it going? Uh, I'm beginning to get a little bit tired now, so uh, I'm hoping to get done even in the next 15 minutes. So, yeah. That's All right, we, it looks like we've got a, a, a guess of 15 minutes here. So, how do you think, how do you think Swap is doing? Uh, I guess she must be doing great. Uh, she hasn't looked up once, so I guess she's in it completely. Hasn't looked up once. We're making you look up now. I'll let you get back. All right, great, thanks. I'm counting 15 minutes. Okay. So, Swati, how are we doing? Doing good. Um, I set up the base application, so now I'm trying to figure out which API to use and things like that. Okay, so you think it's like, uh, he's saying 15 minutes, do you think it's like 10 for you to get done? Oh, we'll see, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes, 10 minutes. You got 10 minutes on me. Okay. I'm probably going to lose then, but okay, <laughs> sure. I thought I was close, but uh, it's pretty convoluted. <laughs> That's straightforward. Ah, uh, what do you think this is, Ame? Engineering friends match? Of course it's convoluted. That's why we're here. I didn't realize it's gonna have those many uh, catches, as I would say. Uh, the, the thing that threw me off was the aspect of ignoring the host. Looks like both contestants are getting some good data back from the controller, but I'm not sure it meets the requirements of the scenario. Yeah, the challenge with an engineering deathmatch is all the fine details. But it looks like Ame thinks he's got it done. Challenge writer and proctor Brett Tiller is checking it out now. Will it be enough? So some of the device, actually most of the devices are not in managed state, so all the information is not available. The information should be available, but it will show... No, like a lot of it is not available, it's empty or it's not present, so if you, even if you go here, so 
all of the parking collection failures. So that means certain attributes of devices, it's not available for those devices. Yeah, not. so what you want to do is that when you get the, um, I don't want to give it away. So when you get the node, right, the node has an ID. Yeah, yeah. no, I, 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 I'm sorry, Dan, I'll give an example. Okay, yeah, show me that. So these are targets, right? So then I have all the information on this one, I have on this one, on but on this one I don't have I don't have start port name. So in this I have start port name. Yeah. In this I don't have start port name. So yeah. even though I found the association, there is no start port name. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So um So I'm saying if you want yeah, to start port a, there's a certain way that you I don't care if it, okay, let me put it this way. If it doesn't have a start port name I don't care about the yeah, okay. And just like a honey badger, Brett don't care about the host name. And now, Swatty wants to see if she's finished. What's the, uh, tell me the name of the um, switch. Okay, uh, WSC6503E. Uh, okay, so that one would be, that one is 211.1.2.1.1. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, uh, it's a connector, Okay, so right? tell me what it connects to. Uh, it connects to uh, 211.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. Uh, well, what I'm looking for is the target name, the source interface, and the target interface. Yeah, sure. Uh, the, the target would be... Okay, I'm going to check with him and see where he is. And then I'll come back. Ame gets a second chance because Swati's data doesn't have the target name included. All right, let's do one more. Okay. So let's do 212.1.10.1. Two, 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 one. So 212.1.10.1. One, one. One, Okay. Right. Uh, that's uh, campus access one WSC 385048U and the two inter interfaces are 102 and 101 and receiving end is 5555. And we have a winner! Congratulations Ame, you have completed our first APIC EM challenge. You came out victorious, it was a very tight match. It looked like you guys were kind of head to head at the very end there. Um, so just congratulations. Anything that you want to say to the audience at home about uh, APIC EM or anything like that? Sure, I mean, uh, the, so the kind of question that I was actually posed in the, uh, in the competition was actually quite challenging, but the aspect that the APIC EM APIs allows you to do such kind of complex logic uh, in like in a matter of an hour or so, that itself shows that how easy to use the product is. So I would encourage you to download it from uh, Cisco.com, go APKM, and uh, and you know uh, play around with the APIs. I would also request you to try out the Python li uh, the Python client library to interact with the APIs as well. That's a pretty neat open source uh, tool. So definitely give it a shot. Sounds good. And for winning, uh, DevNet wants to pre present you with a BB-8 uh, Sphero robot. Thank so you. congratulations. We have a very special match dedicated to APIC EM. And uh, I'm going to restart this because I realized I've missed something. <laughs> uh, best of luck to me, more, more than her on that. That's, that's all about it.